Quad-core CPUs have been the gold standard for the past 10 or so years, and for years before that, dual-core chips were king, with many systems rocking Pentiums or Core 2 Duos. But when looking at each successive jump in core count, there seems to be little increments where chips featuring these core numbers just don't exist. The number 3 seems to have been forgotten. Well, actually, CPUs featuring 3 cores do exist, and they've proved to be pretty popular in the time they were released. So, what happened to them, and why don't we hear much about them in the budget space? Before we get into this video, I'd like to say that this topic was actually suggested on the community discord server back in October of last year. If you want to get more involved in the community, or even suggest video topics like this, then the link to join will be in the description below. So without any further ado, let's get into this. The story of the triple core processor is actually pretty interesting and dates back to early 2009 with the release of the AMD Phenom 2 X3720 back on February 9th, 2009. This was a 95W chip on the AM3 platform that ran at 2.8GHz, and with the $145 MSRP, this chip was actually quite popular with the budget crowd. Now, between the release of this chip in mid-2010, AMD released 9 more triple core processors, all under the Phenom 2 X3 name. Under the hood, these chips were actually just salvaged quad-core chips with one core disabled, and when looking at the die shot of one of these, it looks identical to its bigger four-core brother. In fact, it was actually possible to unlock the fourth disabled core if you got lucky with your chip, and this possibility is what ultimately drove so many people to go out and buy one of these. At the time, they represented a great value, and since they were priced fairly competitively, they were a great option for those who were on a budget. So, having three cores is nice, and it's certainly better than having two. But why did these CPUs exist in the first place? Having three cores just seems so… awkward. Well, the main reason for this is due to the way the CPUs were manufactured. When looking at the physical die of a chip, there are millions of microscopic transistors and other electrical circuitry, and when it's this small, there are bound to be some sorts of errors. If you're fabricating a quad-core CPU and one of the cores has an error in it, then it's actually more cost-effective to just disable the messed up core and sell it off as a three-core chip. The same thing goes for dual-core chips as well, and it's ultimately done to keep yields on wafers as high as possible. It also minimizes waste and, hey, also gives the consumer another cheaper option. Intel did the exact same thing with their chips as well, and it even happens today. That's why we have so many different core configurations from both the red and the blue team. While tricore chips seem to have gone extinct, they proved to be pretty popular back in their heyday. When comparing their performance to other chips at the time, they could actually hold their own against their recently released Core i3 series, and were also more overclockable. In fact, people were getting above and beyond 3.5GHz with these things left and right, and once overclocked, it actually competed with the more expensive Phenom 2 X4s when it stopped clocks. So, from what these triple core chips offered, they seem to be great budget options, and they certainly were back in their prime. So then, why haven't we seen any more tri-core processors if they prove to be so mildly successful? Well, part of it actually has to do with the way that tech is evolving. For the past 7 or so years, we've seen more programs being optimized to run on 4 or more threads, and as a consequence, we've seen dual cores and subsequently tri-cores fall out of favor. Intel and AMD both still offer dual core chips, but they come with hyper-threading, meaning they aren't truly dual cores anymore. In fact, the closest thing that we've actually gotten to a tri-core chip was the AMD FX6300, which released back in October of 2012. And even then, it wasn't really a tri-core chip, even though data flowed through it as if it were a hyper-threaded triple-core processor. The pricing also wouldn't make sense in a modern market, as AMD offers quad-core CPUs for around $100, while Intel offers dual-core Pentiums, which would honestly outperform a tri-core Ryzen for only 60 bucks. There isn't really a place in the market for any triple core chips, and as a result, it wouldn't make any business sense to spend money on developing and producing a product that wouldn't revolutionize anything and, as a result, most likely flop. The AMD tri-core chips existed in a unique time in hardware development, where the switch between dual-core and quad-core processing was still taking place. Quad-core chips were still relatively expensive, while dual-core chips were inexpensive but being phased out. These Phenom X3s offered the best of both worlds at the time. They offered performance that was more in line with a quad-core chip at a price that was more in line with a dual-core. This level of performance simply isn't needed anymore, and the general architecture of a chip utilizing three cores might actually hurt performance in a world where four-threaded CPUs are the norm. 
Okay then Prosu, if it's 4 threads that you need, then why not make a 3 core 6 thread chip? Well, at that level of performance, it would actually just be worth it to have a quad core instead, and it would also probably be cheaper and more efficient. It definitely still is an interesting idea, however, and it was definitely a worthwhile experiment for AMD to release the triple core Phenom 2 X3s. But the ultimate reason we don't hear much from them anymore is simply because they just haven't aged well. Like many older Core 2 duos, they simply don't have the juice to power through modern applications, and the same thing is true with the Core 2 quads. While they'd be fine for general purpose or office machines, if you plan on doing anything processor intensive, then the major drawbacks will simply be their age and design. But if you are interested in checking out some triple core CPUs, then I will leave a link in the description to a website that details the specs and goes much further in depth. But for now, the Phenom 2 X3s will remain an interesting and mildly successful experiment from AMD. While they proved to be great budget CPUs in the past, modern workloads and software designs simply wouldn't allow these chips to run very well. But despite the drawbacks, it'd actually be pretty interesting to see what a modern tri-core AMD or Intel CPU could do. And despite all the logistical and performance issues, it'd still be an interesting experiment, and I'd be curious to see how one would perform in 2019. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. And also tell us, what do you guys think of the Phantom X3s? Do you have experience with one, or did you hear something about them back in the day? We really can't wait to see what you guys have to say, and I'm actually legitimately interested in hearing about one of these. Because, little known fact, the Xbox 360 actually had a tri-core processor, and that thing actually performed pretty decently for the time. So I'm honestly just curious to see how a tri-core chip would perform today. So once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.